is uh, Dr. George Hill. He's going to have a presentation on non-native snakes. Well, I want to start by saying I don't really know how I got here. I'm not a herpetologist. Uh, we had to do some herpetology when we were in school, but I don't pretend to know a whole lot about snakes, but I do know that I don't want my neighbor having a cobra in his workshop. And that's how all this started, and that's how I got into this deal. I had a client walk in there and say, hey, man, look at what I got. And he pulls out his iPad and uh, holds up. He bought himself a monocle cobra. Um, and I'm asking him, what are you, what are you thinking? You know, and he says, they're cool. And you know, snakes can be cool. But uh, he's got a two-year-old son and a seven-year-old son. And he's got it in a really good uh, plexiglass container in his work shed. But I don't want my children and grandchildren in my backyard when a guy next door can have a cobra in his work shed. And I don't know what a 13-year-old boy is going to do with a cobra, but I remember double dares when I was here. So there's certain things you just you don't get into. This concerned me so much. Uh, and he finally saw it and got rid of it. Uh, but he was licensed to get it over a 30-minute test over the internet and paid $20, and he was a licensed snake handler. So I went to the commissioner's court and said, you know, this, we, we, we got to do something about this because 10 years ago, we don't have big cats in Wilson County because of myself, Sheriff Tackett, and Judge Quinn. We had lots of big cats here. We had issues with them. Uh, I was the United States Department of Agriculture veterinarian that was placed in charge of it. And uh, the fortunate thing for us is when they reproduced, they had to be non-breeding. We had a nail to hang our hat on and we got rid of them and we sent them to San Diego. So we don't have big cats here. And there's reasons for that. And the same thing holds with non-indigenous toxic snakes. You know, they don't belong here. Okay, they weren't here, they don't belong here. And if you're not a zoo, if you're not a teaching facility or a research institute, you don't, you don't need COVID. And I'll argue with it. Now, this has gone viral nationwide. We've got herpetologists that are touring <coughs> and they're talking about suing us in the county. We're probably going to have to send this thing through a boat so we as people who live here in the county have to say, listen, I, I vote against non-indigenous toxic snakes in the county. We don't have a zoo here. We don't have a teaching facility. And we don't have research facilities here for that. So they just don't belong here. And that's just my opinion. But the county commissioners and the county court and the judge, they thought kind of like I thought. I mean, this old country boy, I don't want to go over next door. So this has invited a lot of problems for us. They listed um, a lot of pythons that shouldn't be in there. They flew in specialists from Florida to testify about the issues that are going on in the Everglades in Florida. And y'all know that we're losing a lot of the alligators there. And as a matter of fact, that was all caused by Hurricane Andrew. All those snakes down there because of Hurricane Andrew. They had 900 snakes in a research facility, and Hurricane Andrew took it out. All the snakes that we're dealing with in the Everglades came, all these snakes were DNA tested, by the way. All of those snakes in the Everglades are coming from two snakes. Two snakes did this. All of them catching and beheading their, their DNA testing in the Mexico. There's a slaughter going on right now, and I don't approve of that. I mean, it's like rattlesnake round. They're going out there chopping heads off with. Um, Machetes and whatever, and that's 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 not. I'm not an advocate of that, but at the same time, they're trying to get this thing under control. And these specialists came in and talked to us and told us how these snakes can't survive in this in our environment. The mildest of winter kills them, and yada 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 yada. And then, of course, when they're all through, I'm telling them, look, July of 2011, we have an article in our paper where one survived for four months, ate a 70-pound goat. 50 pound dog and five chickens. And Mrs. Dilla's, y'all may remember the article, Mrs. Dilla's chicken coop ate five chickens that one. 
They killed the snake. I think the snake would have been better if they could have caught it and moved it to a facility. But they killed it. Uh, and I'm not so certain that wouldn't be my first reaction. Um, but nonetheless, the snake got out. The snake did survive. And how long does it take a snake to survive to get a small child like this? And it'll take five minutes. I don't need a whole north. I mean, five minutes is all it takes. And so there's the issues that we have. So the ruling that we made was that pythons over four feet can't stay in the county. And what this does, this allows people that do breed these things, because they crossbreed them, and they do, and it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. And there's people that make a living out of it that live in this county. But ball pythons is probably, I know it's got to be the major snake that's traded in the snake world. Am I, am I right or wrong? I understand this guy. You raise snakes. Yes, I do. And you are for them. Okay. And, and they don't get, I mean, they might get four feet that I've seen. I've seen a couple that were maybe close to five, but I've never seen a ball pythons <coughs> over five as long as you. Uh, that would be the exception of the rule would be yeah. the Shaquille and the ball python. And, and that's precisely why we came up with rules and regulations that say, okay, hey, man, you can have a constrictor if it's less than four feet. So that doesn't affect 95% of the trade that goes on with this, the, the, tra the snake world because most of them are dealing with ball pythons and they're less than four feet. We didn't affect these guys. Now, with the exception to the rule, if you get one that's going to start going over four feet and hitting that five, well, then you're going to have an exception to your rule. You're going to have to get it out of the county. We don't, we don't want constrictors over four feet. And we certainly don't want toxic snakes that are non-indigenous. Now, this has cited anger throughout the nation. I mean, we've got herpetologists all over the place that, that are furious with the legislation we're trying to make. But I don't understand it. When we made the, the rule that we were only going to drive one way on C Street, uh, I didn't hear anybody come out of Florida or, you know, Oklahoma or East Coast to complain that we, we changed the direction that we wanted to drive on C Street. But yet when we decide, hey man, we don't want cobras, we don't want mambas, I don't want poisonous dark frogs, I don't want uh, cane toad frogs, I don't want those in the county either. I'm pushing for all reptiles that are dangerous to be out of here because it's not something that we know anything about. I treat 200 snake bites a year. I know how to treat a snake bite. Yeah. I know how to treat a rattlesnake bite, a cobra bite, a, sorry, a copperhead bite, and a water moccasin. I treated my first, my first um, coral snake bite a year ago. I've been practiced 30 years before I treated my first coral snake bite. But I wouldn't know how to treat a cobra bite or a mamba bite. You know how they treat it in Africa and India? They cut off the arm. That's how they do it. If you want to live. And you can get treated for it, yeah. So, what we're going to say if a person wants to keep a venomous snake or a rattlesnake, copperhead, if you want to have one in your house, you're going to have to have an animal venom. On file on <laughs> because we need to have it there. So that's how I got involved with this. You heard it. And again, I, I don't hate snakes. Um, I, you know, I've, I've gotten where I don't kill coral snakes. They, they don't cause much of a problem, and I know they kill the copperheads. I've seen that a bunch of times. So I don't kill them, and I'm just going to move copperheads to the back of the ranch. So I'm not a snake hater by any, any point, but at the same time, I don't want to invite problems. I don't want to invite problems. And the thing they talk about is survivability. Well, you know what? If they're in a cage and you got 50 of them in your garage in plexiglass boxes, they're surviving. They're, they're fine. And a little Texas tornado or a little twister or maybe even a bar, or maybe a tree falls down from old age and crushes your little tool shed, well, then you got snakes everywhere. So therein lies the issue that we had, and we thought we came up with a solution, but we have, we've made a lot of people mad, and I'm certainly not, I know you're a snake uh, owner and raiser, and 
I'm not here to make you mad, but I'm here to protect my children and my grandchildren in this county. And I've been here for five generations, and my children are sixth generation. I think I have a right to say what, what I want for my county and the commissioners. And I think a lot of people in here, if we push this to a vote, we're going to vote the same way. But that's maybe where it's going to go. Uh, because they're, they're starting to ramp up against us on this, and they're thinking that we're horribly wrong. Uh, what type of snakes, what's the major snake that you have? And I'm not picking on you, I'm, I'm really trying to get information. What's the major kind of snake that you have? <clears throat> Ballpark. Okay. And how many? And are any of them over four feet? Then everything that we're doing will not even affect you. And that's that's exactly what we, we're trying to do. We don't want to affect people. That, do you sell them? That's it. Yeah. So we're, we're not trying to interfere with anybody's business. And I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Everybody has a right to me. A living is just when they get over four feet, we get concerned. And do you have any venomous snakes? I do not. You do not? Thank you. I think we're, we're already buzzed. Okay. On that Burmese python that was over two foot, they killed all of them. Um, uh, they found, because I, I saw, well, I knew about it, saw the article and said that, and recently the lady also had a letter to the editor. You know, they never have tracked that back to the, the owner of this snake. Yeah. That's been my understanding. I was going to try and find the article. I, I'm sure they picked up. Because it sounded like in the article that it came from like a mile or two or that, which is a humongous snake. Because that snake is just big around. Um, Can you imagine how large it was when it go again? <laughs> well, I didn't hear that it ate, ate the goat. I know that it killed their dog. And I thought it killed the goat. The goat. But I know it was, when you saw the picture of it, you could see the lumps in it from the chickens. And the other chickens that it killed, that it just hadn't eaten them. Because the other chickens wouldn't go into it. Uh, it took picture in the hen house. And uh, um, the chickens wouldn't go in the hen house. And so finally they <laughs> decided Start to check why. And there's this massive white, yellow snake down there. And it's kind of lumpy. And, uh, but, uh, I, it had been several months, weeks, according to what I read in the thing, it sounded like they did find out where it came from, um, where somebody came forward, and uh, they didn't want to kill it, and they wanted to you know, get the home, but somebody's going to take it and have it here, and they didn't know how to contact the people, so I think that's what it happened. But, but, um, but, you know, it, it traveled at least over a mile. Had been living on its own for a while because months. It found yeah, this wasn't days and weeks. This was months. Most animals would not be very afraid. Would not even know what that thing was. You know. And even with children. So we thank God that we didn't a have a child bump into it. Well, even a ten foot once. Even as that was on Kaikaster Creek in July of uh, 2011. Yeah. Yes. When, but even when, that, when that happened. Even if I came across it, I mean, it could kill me. It could choke. Oh me. yeah. It There's no question. It would need to be That's exactly why, I, with the legislation that we came up and the rules and the ordinances, when we have the pythons over four feet out of here, then we don't have to worry so much about it. And we're not going to affect your business. We're not going to touch you. It's not going to have any, any, any problem with you. You're not going to have any problem with us, let's say. So, uh, anyway, that's how, exactly how I got it. The guy that got the cobra did get rid of it. I'm glad to to report that. I, you know, he did start thinking. I mean, that's just not something that that we. You, you, it's like I tell the doctors that work for me. You know, they teach you all this stuff in in medical school, and they come out here looking for all the stuff. And I keep telling them, quit looking for zebras and cicadas. <coughs> We've got quarter horses, and so if we have a snake bite. You know, we're thinking rattlesnake, copperhead, uh, water moccasin, and that's what we deal with. And I'm not looking for COVID. I'm not considering COVID. 
and new, and I'm just a horse doctor. But medical doctors think like I think. When they see a snake bite, they're, they're not thinking cobra. They're not thinking mamba. They're, they're thinking what we normally deal with. So we're just asking that the United States Herpetology Association just kind of lay off of us uh, because we live in this county and this is kind of what we want for us. And at the same time, we're not affecting like this gentleman here. I just met him. But we're not going to affect what he does because he doesn't have any snakes that are going to go against the grain. Um, since I keep getting mentioned in this conversation, <laughs> I figure I better start speaking up. Uh, you're right, currently none of mine are over four feet, to my knowledge. I have a never stretched line of measure. They kind of shy, so they're called the ball python for a reason. When you mess with it too much, they ball up. Uh, that's not to say that sooner or later one of them may not grow four foot, and then all of a sudden I'm suddenly out of ordinance and out of business simply because my snake was healthy enough to grow. Uh, I do not believe that keeping them in my garage and plexiglass container would be a benefit to them. They would all be dead. I would love to have brought some here today to show you all, but it's a little bit too cold to do so. They won't survive. The python that you're referring yeah. to now, um, it may have lived out there for several months. I mean, we do have this hot Texas weather. Yeah, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't in the winter. So. It's not going to eat a 70 pound goat and then go and kill a 50 pound dog. Mm -hmm. If a snake is capable of eating a meal that big, and we know there are some that a 10 foot even a seven pound group would probably be. Yeah, that's pushing it, isn't it? That would, <clears throat> you ever feed a big meal? Go out and eat a bunch of Mexican food around here, Tex Mex? Did you want to go out and <laughs> jog a mile afterwards? Did you want to do anything? The thought of a goat having a 70 pound, excuse me, the thought of a snake having a 70 pound meal in it, and then a 50 pound meal, and then eating some chickens. Their metabolism just isn't yeah. that fast, especially yeah. when it's not cold. Well, well, that was a month apart. So you need to know that. that. That wasn't all the same day kills. Uh, even then, you, you know, again, a 70 pound meal on a 10 foot snake, I mean, 10 foot sounds huge, and if you're looking at it as far as a snake, that is pretty big, but think about a 70 pound goat, how long would it be from tip to tip? That's probably taking up most of that animal's tip. Just do it, you try I can't speak, I'm sorry about that. And then some. Um, I mean, you know, common sense will tell you it's going to be the heat in order to digest it. That's why you see so many of these snakes out on the road in the middle of the night. You know, they want the warmth, but it also helps break down. As you all know, heat decomposes a dead animal. You know, snakes don't produce their own body heat. They got to, you know, they got to get it from somewhere. They get it from the surrounding area. So, did that one survive long enough to kill a few animals? Unfortunately, yes, it did. Did that give my industry a black eye? Yeah, it really does. But, you know, I think a lot of the things that we've discussed and brought up to Dr. Hill and the commissioners and like that, um, we want to ensure that decisions are made are based upon accurate information. You know, this man would have died. He would not have lived here. You know, we did not bring any experts in from Florida to say that. We brought in Dave Barker, who was from Bernie. Um, he would pretty much be the epitome of the godfather of the herpetology industry. And, uh, you know, he's much said, you have as much, you have a better chance of being killed by an elephant in this county than you do one of these snakes. No, we won't be killed by an elephant, but we have legislation that said you're not bringing an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if a, if a rogue elephant from somewhere outside the yeah. county were to come over, because I don't think they really pay attention to county barriers, you know, I don't want anybody hurt by a snake, you know. Um, anytime it happens, it's like, you know, a pit bull owner hears of a pit bull killing somebody, you, you blame the reckless owner, not yeah. you know, the animal yeah. itself. Um, I believe in that one meeting you said you were a favor of the pit bull as your favorite breed because it's a proverbial yeah, underdog. Yeah, one of my favorite breeds. There is no bigger underdog in this world probably than snakes. I mean, even biblical, you know, you know Adam and Eve, you know, who lured them in. So, you know, we get the biggest black eye anytime that it happens. The whole Florida debacle, you know, I tell you, I hate to hear that, and the media just fuels the flames. Oh, you know, now a rock python's gotten loose, and it's going to breed with worms, and there's going to be the super python, and it's going to get 40 foot long. And it's not a chill. Yeah, isn't that great? You know, I, I really would love to see a 40 foot snake because so far they haven't even been able to produce a 30 foot snake. There's a $50,000 reward for one right now, and it's still not happening. I once heard of a news reporter on the news, national news, saying that these pythons are going to lay 100 eggs a day. Okay, insects can do that. Yes. Reptilians with a very slow metabolism, these things live, you know, 
a while because, you know, when you think of a tortoise, a tortoise will live, what, 100 plus years because it just kind of moves along. You know, nothing to hurry about. I lay 100 eggs a day. Are you kidding me? You know, I would love to have a snake that would do that. Um, I'd be a rich man, you know. Yeah, you're right. That, and, and they do, they skew a lot. And all we are trying to do is come up with, legend. I mean, do you want, would you like to own a, a cobra? I mean, it's just. I don't personally, and beyond my own personal wants or needs, my wife would kill me if I tried to bring one home. So, <laughs> you know, despite the whether or not the snake itself was deadly to me, the, the, the wife certainly was. <laughs> it's more deadly. Um, yeah, she she's very, yeah, she's, you know, I don't think there's a bed in the world that could kill me from that kind of thing. But, you know, I worry that when you give something like this a total hold, it's kind of like, you know, somebody saying, well, let's ban assault weapons. Well, what's your classification of assault weapon? I hear you. You know, I then it you. starts backsliding into, well, okay, a snake's a four feet. Well, a four foot snake gets out and kills somebody's chicken. I have little baby roosters. A lot of my hen, a lot of my females could probably kill one of my baby roosters. So now a four foot snake is illegal. Well, let's make them three foot snakes. Well, now you really are cutting into the pocketbook because, you know, I keep snakes for several reasons. One, because I find them personally beautiful. Number two, because um, I do use them as a as an income to support my family. My wife doesn't work, she's unable to. So I started breeding reptiles as a means of supporting my family. I'm not doing it just because I'm a low forehead and I'm gonna ride out here on my Harley and I have my leather jacket on and you know, and I want to look tough for all the girls and drape a snake over my neck. I've never draped a snake over my neck, you know. I just don't want to. They love it though when they do kind of constrict around us because you are at 98 degrees and usually they're in a room temperature atmosphere and they just want to be warm. But usually in this area, they're not warm. You know, they're not going to live. They're not going to survive. In the event they survive long enough to get out and to help somebody. And I'm sorry, I kind of took over your lecture. No, you my, know what? I'm, I'm very glad you're here. I mean, um, we're trying to be informative, and I appreciate you talking. Because, again, when we started this, I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I mean, everybody has a right to, to do what they want to, as long as it doesn't infringe on other people. You know, I was not for the smoking ban. Because my daddy smoked three packs a day. I wouldn't put a smoking ban. We lost whites there. I do like the effect that we got. Because I don't like my, I didn't like my little brother lighting up at the table when we went out to eat. So, yeah, we lost rights with that. Uh, I don't like that part of it, but I like the effect. And yeah, we're going to lose rights. You can't bring a big cat into Wilson County. You're not going to bring a cobra in Wilson County. But it's not going to affect your business at all. And again, 95% of the snake trade, which is what you're in to make a living, is with the ball pythons. And so we're really not going to affect everybody. We're just trying to keep the toxics out. Yes, sir? Is this an isolated case? Is there other problems with snakes? Or are we just trying to stop having them? Yeah, we're, we're trying to stop them before it becomes a problem. Okay. Uh, this, this snake was purchased for $40, a monocle code, $40. 30 minutes on the internet. $20 fee, and you're a licensed snake handler in the state of Texas, and that's going to change too. We're going to get that change. So permits are going to be established for you guys with an annual. So we come out. If a person violates, uh, it's a Class C misdemeanor, you know, what is it, $1 to $500 fine per day of, of issues. We're going to set permits. We're going to set regulations on it. Try to mainly try to protect everything. I mean, you're actually not even involved with anything that's written down on paper because all years are less than four feet. So you won't be restricted. It's, and it's certainly not going to affect your business at this point. Keep in mind, though, as a herpetologist, if I could call myself out, I just think I'm going to um, There are many species out there that we have in the States today that would exceed four feet that through private breeding are maintaining um, because their own natural habitats are being destroyed or no longer. So you, you cut down on that, you cut down on my ability to contribute to my industry in a meaningful way. I guess I make a living off of it, but I also see it as my duty to educate about these animals, protect these animals. It's kind of one of the reasons I showed up here. And I did not come to, you know, I just, I had to be abreast. This kind of took me by surprise. One day somebody called me up and said, you realize your snake collection is really well, no, your snake collection is nothing. 
Well, when it initially passed, it was all species of boas and pythons. And that was... Well, that's because the county attorney forgot four foot. <laughs> he was supposed to put anything greater than four feet that was left off in the paperwork. We're going to get that amended. You're going to be perfectly legal. You'll be permitted to do whatever you need to do. If you have a ball python, we walk in there, or the public health department walks in there and finds a ball python uh, five foot long, they're going to ask you to get rid of it. You need to sell it. You need to move it out of the county. You need to give it away, or you need to cut its head off. Whatever you need to do. Whatever you need to do. It's not going to be in this county. I think we were being real fair. It's not going to, again, I, we didn't even affect you. And unless I get one that grows still over five feet, they will continue growing. My females, female snakes are usually the bigger get to And some species, one or two males, I think. But for the most part, it's my girls that are going to be the big ones. So basically, you asked me to cut the head off of a female who produces. Well, I'm not saying you had to cut the head off. Of course, they had, you need to locate it somewhere out of the county, sell it to somebody down the road. Yeah. I mean, and therein lies the. We just have a demonstration on, you know, the dangers of hogs and the feral hogs, but in, and all the damage they can do and the illnesses that they can carry and the viruses mm -hmm. that they can carry. And nobody here been asked to get rid of their hog. Well, we're all trying to get rid of hogs. Well, <laughs> now you got you're on the wrong side of the fence on that deal. We're all trying to get rid of our hogs, everything we can. Or, or the pit bulls, as you, you know, you championed them up that meeting. I mean, there is inherent danger in any animal given enough time. Um, four foot is, is the measure you're comfortable with. Right. What what happens at a five foot snake? What what makes that dangerous versus well, four foot? Well, if you'll you'll help me, maybe we can, we've got to amend this because they left four foot off. If it's gonna if it's not gonna affect anything, do you think that we should go to five feet? I mean, what's the odds are you gonna have a female over five feet? Hey, Doc. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I'm with him. Like I said, uh, I live in Wilson County, and I breed ball pythons. Um, and some of them, I have like 30 snakes. And my big females, they're 10, 11 years old. And I want to say almost all of them are over four feet. Okay. So um, this, this collection's older than mine. So then but six-foot ball python? That's never probably going to ever so going to happen. So why don't we, you know, um, I'm glad you guys are here. Why don't we make this five feet? You know, they're in well, what, the, what have you got to say about that? It would be close. I mean, I got some that would be, maybe you're talking maybe an inch, two inches, that might push over five feet. And But the inherent danger, like he was saying, what's the difference between a four-foot ball python to a five-foot ball python, where reality, they can't even eat a large rat. I mean, yeah, his guinea hen, I mean, they, they, can't, they just can't eat the meal that big. I'm not concerned um, about him eating either one of these two little boys. I'm just worried about the constriction around their neck. Yeah. That goes... Reptiles a little bit more credit than the, the word we're having. You know, mammals choke. Animal uh, reptiles constrict. It's not a thought of a reptile, you know, you've heard of the mammalian brain and the reptile brain, which is on the even lower function. That would be under the idea that this snake would see this little boy and decide, you know, I'm going to take him out. And the way I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl up to him, get up on his shoulders, constrict his neck, and take him out. They don't think that way. I've had Ridiculous little boys of mine who, that big, could strip the crud out of my hand for all of his work. Why? Because it latched on and that was what it constricted. And I thought, I got it. You know, you could just see her proud of herself. You know? And she wouldn't get off my hand until I went stuck her in the cold water. And you ever seen a snake go straight? Like a ruler. Ridiculous. <laughs> could but, you take her off without the cold water? Hmm? Could you take her off without the cold water? That's yes, it? but I did not want her to do it But, in saying that, you know, it'll choke somebody out, you're giving them a little bit too much credit. These animals aren't that intelligent. All they know how to do is try to survive. Um, the Barkers, Dave Barker, I believe, uh, once they set up on the, uh, the Burmese pythons, the reticulated pythons, uh, they used to have them in like dog kennels where they could come and go inside and out. And uh, the things that didn't even, they weren't even smart enough to get them out of the cold. They literally would have to go get these animals that were half dead frozen and try to move them into the inside. The boas, the New World snakes, a little bit higher on the functioning level, I guess, and from South America, they do enough to get it out of the cold. The pythons, the ones that everybody's worried about, they didn't even want to protect themselves. Well, again, the way this all started is with COVID. 
I understand we somehow segue from COBRA to something yeah. to them. And, you know, all that. But at the same time, if we're going to make legislation on what's going to be safe for everybody that is here, especially these small children, then, you know, we, just, we don't want a constrictor that's over 14. So can either one of you tell me that uh, a constrictor that's five foot tall, five foot long, can't kill a child weighing less than 30 pounds? Can you make that statement? No, but I actually say the same thing about a pit bull. I mean, it's just y'all keep bringing. I mean, that's. Well, I mean, you're, you're focused on the snakes what about. Understand is we're looking at domesticated animals versus non-domesticated animals. So it's okay for now, a domesticated dog to the, come maul your children? I mean, it, the, to me, it's the same rationale no, that you have. I just don't understand it. Animal. It's just, but the, you're, you're trying to put reptiles, which are non-domesticated animals, and you cannot domesticate them. And I have proof of that. Um, versus domesticated. But the you bottom line the is the safety of our children. I, I have three children lives. myself. You know I'm not going to bring is? anything in my house that's going to endanger my what children. Do you, do you know what a Leviathan is? Yes. What is it? The sea creature. Uh, it's a reptile. Okay. Yeah, and it's said in the Bible that who can tame a Leviathan? And of course, I'm taking it way out of context, but it's nobody. You do not domesticate snakes. You do not domesticate reptiles. You do not domesticate alligators and crocodiles and boas and cobras. You do not domesticate them. So y'all, the fight that we're getting into with the herpetologists, they keep trying to pull in dogs and cats. You know, well, we I mean, have 32 million cats in the United States, and we've got 70 million dogs, and they are domesticated animals. And we're trying to compare them to reptiles, and that's not apples to oranges. But, but the domestication is not the fact. The, the fact is, is the well-being of our children or your animals in your yard. Whether a, an animal is domesticated or not, it can still hurt you. And like I said, for me, I, I, I could go to the zoo, walk through the reptile aquarium, and not get a goose hair on my arm. But if I see a pit bull run through my front yard, I automatically get defensive and where are my kids? I mean, the, the media opposes them. I mean, I'm not saying pit bulls are bad. I love dogs. But I know there's an inherent danger with them. So, right. Same with the snakes. I, I would not bring a snake in my house that would hurt my children. And I think everybody in this room, let's state it like this. There's no one in this room that could state that a cobra or a mamba is not an enemy. And, and, and I, would, I, would, I would agree with you. I love reptiles, and I would agree with you. And so that's where we're pushing. We do not want a non-indigenous toxic snake in Wilson County. You have all the rattlesnakes you want, as long as you have an antivenom in the hospital under your name and under your care. But I cannot have a cobra mind ball for your five foot five. You cannot I'm have a, so our, our, our verbiage is dangerous reptiles. And Which is a broad subjective terminology because what you consider a dangerous reptile and I consider a pet. Well, again, we, we already established that earlier that 95% of the trade with Python is less than four feet in length, and that's where our legislation is. You're not even going to be affected with what the county is trying to say. You'll be able to not affect you in And that's, that's all we're trying to do is, is stop the, the toxic mainly. That, that's a big concern of ours. But if we don't set a limit on the length of the, of the constrictors, we're going to have guys out here that have 10, 12 foot constrictors. And, and, and you know, I don't want that next door in somebody's woodshed any more than I do a coat when my grandchildren are outside. Is it a problem in this county that there have been a lot of constrictors? I mean, show of hands, who has a no, of constrictors? No, there hasn't, except for that one case. But no, there will not be because we have legislation. So just like you're not going to see an elephant come in this county, and you're not going to see a big cat. Not in this county. George, I want to be devil's advocate here and no offense to you and no offense to you i am not a snake person but how i can testify to that i've been married to her for 37 <laughs> years and it doesn't matter if it looks like a snake she don't get to it right. but my question is how are you going to regulate this are you going to be knocking on doors to see if people have snakes or well no these guys will come and they'll be given a per they'll be given a permit, permit? Mm -hmm. and then the, the health department we'll go out if he's an established business the health department will go out once a year and renew his permit. 
So and if a person decides to have a rattlesnake or a copperhead and he's going to keep those in there, then he's going to be required to have an antivenom on hand to call him more. There has to be a plan. If there's an accidental bite, there has to be a plan. This, okay, <coughs> this is where we go, and this is what we're going to do, and the antivenom's there waiting on us. So what stops someone from illegally owning these? Well, if, if, if we find one, of course, there's a Class C misdemeanor, which is zero to $500 fine per day. Um, if a breeder and a businessman comes within a uh, violation, they lose their permit and they, they don't have any rights. It's essentially a way to regulate me. Mike over there, while Joe Schmo on the street can go and buy a baby barn and raise it up in his house at 12 foot long. And so essentially it does nothing as far as regulating them except for regulates. Well, I guess that's well, what I'm wondering. It's, it's like any other law. All it's just like the, the law. Yeah. it's just like the gun law. It's just like the gun law. You know, we, 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 it's, it's, it's really a catch-22. I mean, what do we do? I mean, what we really want is the danger out. We don't want cobras. We don't want mambas. I don't want poisonous dark frogs. I mean, the cane toad from Hawaii is as, is as lethal as a rattlesnake. I'm curious. You mentioned the poisonous dark frog a couple of times. What's why? Sir? You mentioned the poison dark frog. Now. Yeah, they're selling for 20 bucks. At, uh, right up to 1604, the forum. That yeah. Now, the venom, they're, they're only toxic if they eat a certain ant. But they import these ants for them. It's crazy. I mean, why do this? They don't import the ants for them. They have, and they sell them. All the poison parts I've ever encountered, usually I think they eat the wingless flies and they're non-toxic in captivity. That, that's right. If they don't eat this poisonous ant, they're not toxic. But they're bringing in the ants. What for? I mean, again, why do you want this frog to become toxic? Uh, it's more toxic than a, doing that. it's more toxic than a cobra, folks. Poisonous dark frog is much more poisonous than. No anyway, I guess we've kind of beat this. Well, let me let me just kind of help you sum this up. You know, I mean, um, I actually knew one of the people that had the dangerous cats here in, in the county, and now actually they're just outside the county. But, you know, really, it, it, it's like anything else we do in our daily lives. It boils down to what risk are we willing to accept as a community. And, you know, everybody likes what they like. Everybody doesn't like what they don't like. I mean, you know, my wife doesn't like snakes, whether they're poisonous or not. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. And there's a lot of folks that are that way. You know, uh, I can I can tell you that, that the person that I know that loves cats, she actually sleeps with uh, them in her bed. Now, that's, you know, kind of her business, but the risk is, is what happens if that animal escapes. And that's, that's, that's really what we're kind of all, and it doesn't make any difference if it's a snake, whether it's a, a cat, a pit bull, you know, um, that's, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at. And so that, and then and that's why communities form and people, you know, that have the same kind of beliefs and reasoning, they live in that community and they, you know, if something comes and changes and they don't like it, they leave, you know? I mean, Republicans have become Democrats and vice versa in the last Well, few to years, address you know? your pit bull, and pit bull always comes into the conversation, but we have, we have rules against pit bulls, too. I mean, every dog has a three strike, you're out. If, if, if a dog attacks a third person, it's put to sleep. No questions asked. If it, if it bites three people, or one person three times. Is that a pit bull or any dog? It's, that's uh, any dog, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Any dog, three, three bites, and they're out. Their head comes off and they're gone. Pit bulls, one attack, they're gone. Well, how about we enact that for the python? If any of my pythons attack anybody, <laughs> one strike and they're out. I give them that right there. If it bites anybody other than me, I'll do away with them myself. How about that? We can do that, as opposed to a link. Do they um, uh, identify, you know, like a, a dog, you put a chip in and you can identify the dog? Do they do that for reptiles? Yes, you can, you, you, yeah, you can microchip them. And photographs. Photographs are really well, highly identified. Yeah, see, and, and you know, the other thing is, is we're dealing with animals and we never know what they're going to do. You know, uh, I raised German Shepherds for a long time, and, and you know, they're smart dogs. 
but you know what? I always worry. You know, is something really going to ever happen, or is somebody going to do something that upsets them? And you know, they're smart. And my wife was holding one of her cousins one time who was really, and she just came over and jumped in her lap, and that dog snapped at her. And that's what made me realize, even as smart and as normal caring as we expect for these, she was trying to protect my wife because my wife had raised her from the puff about four weeks old. And, you know, when we go out and we see animals, whether it's a snake or whatever it is, you know, we don't know that. I mean, um, good friends of ours have pit bulls. They seem very loving, but, you know, sometimes they get out, something changes in their environment. <clears throat> you know, you just don't, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and so, it, you know, for me, it all, it all boils down to what risk are you going to step. I, I'm willing to go out and deal with a poisonous snake. She's not willing to deal with any poisonous snake. And so everybody has their own opinion as to what those things are. And so it's, it's the community's, you know, choice to come up with that. And that's why we have elected representatives that we can talk to and tell how we feel and that's how our process works. And that's what we're doing now. The, Herp the United States Herpetology Association is kind of ramping up, and uh, they may very well want to challenge us. I think what we'll end up having to do is just put it on a county vote, and people in the county can vote, and hey, what do you think? And then we'll let the constituents of the county make the decision. I think it'd be a lot smarter if we could all kind of work together and kind of figure out you know, maybe we need to move this to five feet. You know, if, if you're confident that it can't hurt one of these small children, uh, maybe, maybe five feet, maybe I was wrong in that with what I researched. Um, main thing I wanted to do is exempt most of you guys that had the less than four feet. I don't see those as a threat. But the coolest part of that is that wasn't going to affect you guys in your business. It's, you know, but if you got a 10-foot python, I will tell you, I don't want it in this county. No, I'm, county. I'm like him. It's just... One of my friends out of the blue, actually, like my wife is the CNO of the hospital here at the hospital. And she's like, hey, you know what I just heard? And I was like, what? And uh, Wilson County just banned all pythons on boys. You can't have your snakes here anymore. And I'm like, oh, my God, where'd this come from? And then that's how I uh, was brought into this. And I guess there's a big uh, ordeal with the commissioners and whatever. Well, but I will tell you that the county attorney did leave off four feet on the python. He left, you know, anything over four feet. And that's pretty vital to me. Uh, again, if you put it, keep it at four feet, it's not going to affect you at all, and probably not you either. Well, cool. how, how expensive is the microchipping process for? Microchips are cheap, fifteen bucks. Yeah, I mean, is, is that something in in the legislation or in the ordinance that the county is is that well? With where there's labeling, and we were going to require photo IDs of all these animals in a file, and uh, you have to have. Your cages have to pass certain um, parameters and, of course, uh, an annual inspection and all that stuff. Um, pro by protocol, you know, if, if they do choose to have a, a poisonous, see you later, Frank, a poisonous indigenous snake, um, but still, we're sticking to our guns. You're not going to have a, a non-indigenous, you're not going to have a, pipe, uh, a bowl, a mamba or a cobra. Uh, come in this cat. We're not gonna allow no more than you can. You're gonna bring a, a big cat in. I live here, and I'll do everything I can to fight against it uh, because the, of the imminent threat and danger. Listen, folks, if you haven't treated a rattlesnake bite or been around one, then you don't know what you're. It's it's horrific, and I treat them all the time, and it's uh, the the nastiest. I mean, they're nothing compared to what a, a cobra or a mamba can do. Anyway, that's, I think, we, again, we beat this thing to okay. half the day.